there's some stuff you probably didn't know about Raft. Hi friends, and welcome back to Raft. At the very end of October 2021, I started playing this game for the first time. Now, six months later, I know a lot more about Raft than I ever needed to. So today, we're going to talk about some of the stuff that I've learned. These are a combination of fun facts, easter eggs, and just general trivia that I've learned from speedrunning this game and being involved in the community. There's some pretty fun stuff scattered throughout the world, so let's dive into 20 things you probably didn't know about Raft. With some thoughtful planning and careful execution, it's possible to get a massive pet rock on your raft. Creature rocks are designed to break apart when hitting either the player or the ground, but won't do so if the rock hits a spot that the player has partially dug up using a shovel on metal detector spots. If you set up a ramp and line it up with that dig spot, the rock will sometimes roll down onto your raft, where it will stay either indefinitely or until the island despawns. The user experience is a little varied on that part, but you'll at least get a pretty cool screenshot to show your friends. If you're fiddling around reefs, you may or may not have noticed the small schools of fish that call this place home. They come in at least three colors of orange, yellow, and blue, and are simply environmental. They're modeled after schools of angelfish, wrasses, and tangs, which are common reef fish. The little fish are pretty cute and are a great detail, but they could be hard to spot if you're not looking for them. Believe it or not, the ocean is not an endless abyss, and there is a sea floor around the islands. If you follow the steep cliff down into the depths, you'll find a thin margin of sand around the model for an island. If you go out a little farther, the sandbar actually ends, and you can swim fully under the island to see that all of these land masses are actually floating, so that's cool. Even better, the inside of the island is hollow, so you can explore that part too. One of the rarest items that you can fish up with a whopping 0.68% chance to receive it is the Scrap Duck statue. This is a reference to the game Scrap Mechanic, which was also produced by Oxalot Games, which is the same publisher that brought Raft to Steam. There are a total of 17 paintings in the game. Four of them are craftable decorations that depict normal parts of Raft life, five of them are bought from the Tangaroa vending machines and are in a weird art deco type style, and the remaining eight can be dug up as part of the buried treasure that's hidden around large islands. These ones depict a range of pixel art, including the picture Neighbor's Dog, which is actually Raft's community manager's dog. That's just a bonus fact for you. There are a total of 66 items that you can unlock by opening up floating decoration packages. You have a 20% chance of receiving a decoration package from either a barrel or a loot crate, and you can get some pretty cool items from them, like a bathtub that promises to be splinter free. The Visagatan, or the cruise ship, is the second story location that was created as a part of the first chapter. But it's actually named after the street that Redbeat Headquarters is on, which is the studio that made Raft. There are three hidden items in the game that you can only access with console commands or an item spawner. These three things are a fun dev hat with some nifty lights, an OP weapon that does a thousand damage, which is more than enough to one-shot Mama Bear ten times over and still have damage left to spare, and finally a beach ball. This item is actually invisible in your inventory and does literally nothing but take up space, but it does exist. Paddles actually have the highest impact on your raft's movement speed. Your raft alone moves about 1.5 meters per second without any help. A sail can add up to 0.2 meters per second with good wind, and an engine can add up a maximum of half of a meter per second. The paddle, however, can add up to 0.8 meters per second by itself, making it by far the best item for increasing your raft's movement speed. There is a cap to how fast you can make your raft go using all of the available navigation items. With a sail, a paddle, and two engines in the direction of the wind, you can make yourself go up to 3.2 meters a second, which is slightly more than double the base speed of 1.5 meters per second. Despite the graphic on the side of the engine that clearly states that one engine will power 100 foundations, engines will actually function, given at a reduced speed, with up to 110 total foundations. Adding just one more foundation to bring your total up to 111 foundations, however, will shut the engine down entirely. The design for the machete you find on Balboa Island comes from a repurposed street sign, which supposedly says this, which I'm not going to try to read out loud because I would certainly butcher it. This is the name of the village that the machete's artist grew up in. 
You can actually harvest certain birch trees and pine trees on Balboa Island and surrounding evergreen islands to obtain birch seeds and pine cones to grow on your raft. This may seem obvious to experienced players, but it's a hidden detail that not too many players fully utilized. Jeremiah the Shark has an aggressive range and a priority list when it comes to attacking the player and the raft. If the player is in the water inside of Jeremiah's detection radius, the player will always have the highest priority for attack targets. The raft, however, will always come second within this radius, so long as the cooldown on raft attacks is active. However, if you manage to get 30 meters away from the shark without dying, you can reset the aggro back to your raft by standing on a piece of land for 20 seconds. Then you can swim freely without being attacked. The shark will also not attack your raft if you are not present to defend it, which is awfully courteous. During the period between Raft being a free game on itch.io and its early access release on Steam, the dev set actually included plans for eels to be added into reefs. These animals would burrow into the sand and would attack players that got too close. Clearly, these were implemented at some point, then removed later in the development process for unknown reasons. There are six types of fishable fish in Raft in three categories, small, medium, and large. The small and medium fish can be cooked three at a time on a large grill, but the same large grill will only fit one large fish. However, the three categories of fish replenish different levels of hunger when cooked. Small fish of course provide the least sustenance at 20 hunger points, the medium fish each provides 35 hunger points when consumed, and the salmon can be consumed three times, each time giving 30 hunger points, making cooking three medium fish the best use of your grill. Catfish, however, are almost worthless. Like the salmon, they can be consumed three times, but each time only provides 20 hunger, and actually also removes 10 thirst, making them the worst option by far. Before the renovation update in 2021, the unstuck feature worked drastically differently from the way it does in the live game. Now, the unstuck button will always return you to your raft if you are in the water, or to the south side of whatever island you are on. Before this, it would simply teleport you to the nearest landmass, so you could abuse this feature to teleport to various islands in a method called island hopping, and skip all of the in-between traveling time. There are currently five different cassette tapes that can be played on a rafter's radio. Four of these five are found by Metal Detecting Treasure, much in the same way you'd find the developer paintings. Each of these cassettes is in a different genre, being classical, EDM, pop, or rock. These cassettes each have three separate tracks named things like The Seagull Stole My Potato or Llama Waltz. The last cassette can only be found in one specific place in the world and only plays one track, elevator music. This might seem obvious, but because my Twitch chat had to inform me of this, it's worth including here. If you throw a rock, it can do 5 damage, so it only takes 2 rocks to kill a seagull. It takes 20 rocks to kill your friends, and sometimes a bit more if they regenerate health. Fireworks actually have the highest damage output of any weapon in the game, putting out 20 damage. The next best item in the game is the machete, which does a measly 15 damage. Sadly, the firework can only be used on seagulls or other players. The good part is that you can use these on your friends even with friendly fire turned off. So that's 20 things you probably didn't know about Raft. Or maybe you did know them, or maybe just some of them. Be sure to let me know which one of these facts you found the most interesting in the comments down below. I honestly didn't know that catfish removed your thirst until I started researching for this video, so that would definitely be mine. In any case, that's it from me for now. I hope you enjoyed. Please consider leaving a like if you did, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. It really helps me out. I hope to see you all again soon, but until then, have a great day.